Now let's move on. As we discussed, we know that the electrophile that is generated during the reaction is R C triple bond O plus. Okay. So now if we were to sort of you know this R can be any alkyl group. So if you start from acetyl chloride, you end up with CH3 C triple bond O plus. If you start with a longer chain carbon, you're going to end up with that corresponding product, okay, or the oxocarbonium, right? So now, if we were to start with basically H, with R equals H, right? So if I replace this with hydrogen, okay, so then you know we would get you would want to generate an intermediate such as this. H C triple bond O plus okay and this reacts with benzene and then the product that you would eventually get would be continues to be Friedel Crafts acylation except that you will get benzaldehyde. Okay. So this reaction you know can be conducted. This reaction is known as a formylation reaction. I'm just going to write it down so that you understand this. So F O R M Y L A T I O N. It's called a formylation reaction. And this formylation reaction can actually be carried out under some conditions. Okay, so the conditions are as follows. Basically, we need to generate H C triple bond O plus and this can be done by the following conditions, which is reaction of HCl plus carbon monoxide. I think many of you know carbon monoxide and plus a Lewis acid, which is AlCl3. And you also need CuCl. Okay. And this is usually a reversible reaction. So you will get HC triple bond O plus and AlCl4 minus, which is a familiar reagent for us now. And this, the conditions correspond to what is known as the Gatterman Coke reaction. Okay. So the Gatterman Coke reaction is nothing but the reaction of benzene with these reagents as shown here, which is HCl, carbon monoxide, aluminum chloride in the presence of copper chloride. And the product that is formed is actually the formylated benzene, which is the following, which is basically benzaldehyde. Okay. So Gatterman Coke or Gatterman Coke reaction is actually a, a modified Friedel Crafts reaction and it produces aldehydes on aromatic compounds. Okay. Now there's a, a variation of this reaction, which is basically the instead of using carbon monoxide, you could also use HCN, which is hydrogen cyanide. Okay. So HCN CN is basically essentially C triple bond N H and if you recall the intermediate that we were looking at was H C triple bond O. Okay, So if you see that these are actually isoelectronic and so you can use H C N for this same formulation reaction and the reaction conditions that can be used are H C N in the presence of an acid and in the presence of you know you can use HCl and a Lewis acid and it's going to give you the product okay so the mechanism that we're looking at is basically the reaction of benzene plus C triple bond N H and if you are doing this reaction in the presence of a strong acid then what can happen is this this attacks and the C triple bond N can break and it gives you the intermediate 
C double bond N H H and there's a hydrogen that remains over here right and you can generate a positive charge so as always in electrophilic aromatic substitution and this is the intermediate that's going to be formed okay and subsequent loss of proton this can be lost and then you have hydrolysis around the c double bond n it's going to give you the aldehyde okay so these are some modified conditions that can be used to generate aldehydes and you know and in even ketones for that matter and these are collectively known as gatamin reaction all right now let's discuss the couple of problems that we told during the class so this has been done as i mentioned earlier to make sure that you guys uh, listen to the lectures so the first problem that we looked at was the you know when the reaction of benzene in the presence of br2 really doesn't happen and if you add a small amount of pyridine it actually gives you the product which is bromobenzene right so the question that we asked was what is the mechanism how do you explain this observation okay so pyridine as you know is actually a base right so it is aromatic but the electrons that are present here are actually quite basic on the nitrogen and so you can imagine that br which is quite you know familiar to us that it's you know br2 can actually heterolytically cleave to give br minus so you can think about a similar reaction where this attacks and the attack actually produces br minus and br plus okay so the br plus is going to be in the form of pyridine ion so your reaction is going to be in the following way so it is going to form nbr and pyridine actually acquires a positive charge and it produces br minus as a byproduct okay now this pyridine complex dominated pyridine complex is actually quite reactive and so you can imagine that benzene is now it's quite favorable for benzene to react and give you a pyridine as the byproduct and give you the same complex that we normally are used to during bromination so it's going to give you br h and this as the product and it will give you pyridine as the byproduct okay so now as you can see pyridine becomes available for further reaction and therefore it is actually catalytic okay and this complex can then further break down and give you the product which is the bromopenzene okay now let's move on to the next problem which is to do with the uh, real crafts uh, acylation reaction so here the question that we had asked was the following compound which is what is the product that is formed when you expose this compound to al cl3 okay so i'm just going to redraw the compound structure here and just to be clear let's number it one two three four and so this was the compound and the question that has been asked is what is the product that is formed okay so in order to address this question let's look at what alcl3 could do in the presence of a acid chloride all right so normally when we look at an acid chloride and aluminum chloride we know that the following intermediate is going to be formed okay so therefore if you see if you consider this scenario so you're going to get the benzene ring would remain the way it is right and then you have one two three four and if this is the carbon and the acid chloride that's going to react and it's going to kick out chloride ion then the product or the intermediate that you're going to get is c triple bond o plus okay just to be sure let us now just renumber this one two three four and then there's the benzene ring so numbering wise we are fine so this is going to be the intermediate that is formed okay now what can this intermediate do 
right? There are many things that the intermediate can do. One is to, if there is a, some nucleophile present, it's going to react with that nucleophile and produce the product. But in this case, I don't see any other nucleophile being present here. So the other alternative is that uh, it can do an intermolecular reaction. And now this intermolecular reaction, of course, can happen. And the intermolecular reaction could be the reaction of the benzene ring. But what is also possible is an intramolecular reaction. And so the way in which the intramolecular reaction can occur is in the following way. So this is the electrophile and it attacks on this carbon. And then you're going to have electrons being pushed over there. Okay. So let's now draw out this product that we are going to look at. Now what I'll do is I'm just going to number this so that it becomes easy for us to follow. So this carbon that I'm highlighting here, okay, you can see that this bond over here is going to react and it's going to give you the product. So let me draw out the product as shown here. So let's number this as number 5 and number 6. So we redraw the benzene ring and so there's going to be carbon number 5 and then there's carbon number 6. They're going to remain intact and just to be clear I'm just going to highlight this over here and the rest of the molecule is going to be the same as far as the benzene ring is concerned. But now in this new ring we have already determined that it's going to be a, a six-membered ring, right? And so in order to understand the six-membered ring, we're going to see the numbering as we have done previously. So this is going to be carbon 4, this is carbon 3, this is carbon 2, and this is carbon number 1, okay? And carbon number 1 actually has the double bond O on it, right? So, so far we are doing fine. Now we need to make sure that the, the product is written out correctly. And so once this bond over here breaks, then you're going to form, you know, there's going to be hydrogen that remains here uh, intact. So this hydrogen is going to be intact and there's going to be a positive charge over here, right? So this is going to be the structure that is going to be formed. And now if we can propose that there's going to be a loss of H plus uh, to restore aromaticity, then the likely product that would be formed would be the following, right? So if you stick to the same sort of numbering, this is C double bond O and this is number 5, this is number 6, 4, three, two, one. Okay. So this is likely the product that is going to be formed during this reaction. Okay. Now I want you all to go back and look at the M by Z ratio of this molecule and you should be able to get 146 as the M by Z ratio that you would predict.